Ich habe beide Kacken jetzt. Ready? Mhm. Okay. So, I'm going through doing my daily routine. And uh, excuse me if I get super if I get super excited for what's about to happen, what I'm about to show you guys. It's been a, a pretty long project, um, super dear to me. Um, you guys know I love lizards. Um, I've been keeping an iguana since I was a kid. And um, I have a cool species here in captivity. As I'm going through doing my daily feed out, I feed out fruits, veggies, greens and stuff, Missouri. And um, I'm checking on one of my females. And this is a thing that I do on the daily on the regular um i noticed that she dropped a ton of weight over the last couple hours um and so you see she's rather thin but she did give us some eggs so now i have no clue if the eggs are fertile or infertile but um we're gonna go collect them and count them and see which ones are good so uh take a step in and we'll show you guys this is our um iguana delicatissima let's close this door behind you so she doesn't run out uh, there we go so now we're trapped in here so ideally when an animal is showing signs of being grabbed you put this stuff up there you give them places to nest now an animal is not going to reproduce in captivity if they're not one fully properly fed or housed two if they're fully stress free and they're comfortable um, any animal will hold their eggs in and they'll become egg bound and they will die um, for, for lizards at least um, so carefully, respectfully, gently, um, I'm going to remove this box from what I saw earlier. As you can see, I put a, 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 a mound of uh, sand in here as these guys are ocean slash beach dwelling animals. They live out in the Caribbean. So um, they're going to be living, of course, by the sand. So I gave them a big uh, nest so she can dig through and also lay some eggs. Uh, if she wanted to, I give her another option. Of laying inside a potted plant this is a big plant over here um, where she hangs out regularly and a third option is she has to lay under a plastic box from which I've done some research and saw in, in people and different zoos and stuff there's not many people that have bred these things successfully in captivity but um you know the well, the weather out here in Florida is perfect for these guys because it mimics the Caribbean so um, this box holds humidity it's dark it's black so it absorbs heat so of course it's a little bit more humid down there so um she laid her eggs down there and we're going to show you guys we're going to go through them pick them now usually females will get uh territorial over their nesting area so if you look back here she loved she dug and laid eggs so i can see one two three already four and she comes she's like you move my box what are you doing to my eggs now naturally uh in the wild these things can get eaten by ants get eaten by dogs get eaten by natives so carefully this is a good egg nice and fat uh you can tell an egg is no good if it's super wrinkly and it's not thick or solid um so uh also too if you don't pull these eggs in enough time that's two eggs you can also lose these eggs to fire ants fire ants will come eat these eggs up in an instant quick four eggs so far four good eggs so far Ooh, getting more five if you want to come closer jeff i can show me digging through it and you guys can see how perfectly she laid these eggs. I'm, I'm pulling back this layer, this thin, thin layer of sand, and her eggs are right here. Perfect little round eggs. Oops, dropped that one. Usually these guys, uh, their membranes stick in the egg, so you don't want to turn the egg, but it takes a few, I think about 36 hours or so for the eggs to just attach their membranes to one side luckily i'm digging over here on soft soil soft sand so i plop one down 
Man, she gave a big, pretty big clutch, huh? I'm super excited, man. From I had my first iguana at about age of uh, five, five or six, and uh, it's a it's a blessing, man, to be able to keep a super rare species in captivity, almost almost endangered, due to the animals' population decreasing in their natural habitats from people eating eggs, from natural predators, from invasive species also, like dogs and cats, where these guys come from. Dogs, feral dogs and feral cats uh, roam through and dig these nests up and they eat the eggs. Also, these guys, uh, their, nat their natural habitats are being destroyed. I thought it was an egg, this is actually a rock or a piece of clay. Their natural habitats are being destroyed also by humans because humans are digging up mangroves, tearing down their natural ecosystem and habitats to build uh, resorts and stuff for tourism. Now, with not much land to occupy on these small islands and the Lesser Antilles, this guy's populations, of course, are decreasing. Now I'm going through, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm seeing any more eggs in here, but I'm going through rather soft to see. I don't want to poke too hard because I'll stab the eggs with my giant fingers. So I'm going real soft and slow. And usually where the sand is pretty easy at, it's not hard. She's dug up all the, you know, she just dug that little small area and laid her eggs. If you guys look close, you can already see the ants coming through. We're ready to pounce on these bad boys. But as we can see, all the eggs look freaking good, man. They're all fat, they're all fertile, they're all healthy looking. Now, I've been giving these guys a wide variety of different greens and fruits and veg. Um, so, she's like, what are you doing? She's been staring at me the whole time. We got one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen eggs. That's a pretty decent clutch, I would believe. Um, there's not been much documentation of these guys laying eggs in captivity and people hatching them out. It's been a small, small handful of people, handful of people in history, including zoos, to be able to get these type of animals to breed and also be happy in captivity. Um, it's been a long journey with these guys, it's only been a year with this particular project, but for the first clutch to come out with 13 good looking eggs, it takes about 90 days in the incubator for these guys to fully go through a, um, a, a pro reproduction period in a, a ventilated system. Um, one of my senseis is a master breeder of tegu eggs, iguana eggs, snake eggs, chicken eggs, he likes exotic chickens now, but um, he's been giving me a ton of tips on just egg incubation and you know taking care of these beautiful species in captivity for a while. He's about 60 or 80 or 90 years old, so he's got a ton of, of, of experience. And for a young man like me, that's a hobbyist and enthusiast and just an all-around lover of animals, especially the iguana species, I learn a ton. So I'm super excited, man. We've got our eggs, 13 nice looking eggs, man. And then we'll show you our girl over here. What's up, mama? We'll show you what she's look like. She's a little on the shaky side right now because of course she just laid all her eggs, but she'll fatten up. You can tell also by the bruising on her back that she's been mating with the male. And you'll see the difference between this iguana in a few weeks when she eats a ton of food, she'll fatten up. It's a cute little mama. And she'll be back doing her thing, nice, thick, and fat. But of course she's got plenty of place to bask and eat. I'm gonna take these off in a way and I'll show you the daddy to these guys. Um, he's a rather magnificent species, as I might say. Um, I'm gonna put these guys over here. That's in, close it up. And we're off. We're gonna go show you guys Big Papa. 
and congratulate Big Papa on a successful clutch. that down right there. Now this is where she originally lived at for the past couple months. Come check this out. This is Big Papa. Now you have your Greater Antillean Islands and your Lesser Antillean Islands. Parts of Cuba, Dominican Republic, and Haiti are gonna be your Greater Antillean Islands. Your lesser Antillean islands are going to be all those islands from uh, Antigua to uh, Guadalupe, etc. There's a chain, a ton of like 10, 12, 15 islands down there. I don't even know how many. Um, and they're close to South America in that little small pocket. Just a bunch of Caribbean islands going down the, down the coast over there. Not the coast, but you know, right, right next to the coast. Um, you'll see these guys living naturally. Check this big guy out. Come here, big Pablo. Get over here. This is your papa. So all those 13 eggs, if there's half females and half males, you'll get half of them look like this big guy when they're full grown, half like the female. As you can see, he's got bigger jowls. I'm sorry, buddy. I don't want to freak him out. He's got bigger jowls than the female. Big dewlap down there. More in-depth, detailed spikes down the dorsal. And as they get older, they'll develop a white slash pinkish head. Now, these guys are gonna eat your dark leafy greens. Um, they're gonna eat a bunch of fruit and they're also gonna eat animals. Um, they eat small crabs, they'll eat little small fish, you know, and also birds that occupy their area. Um, it's been observed in captivity, I mean, in, in the wild that these guys have been eating um, these, those type of animals. Very, really rare though, about 10% of their diet, maybe seven um, from what I've read. But yeah, man, super sweet species. Uh, as you can see, I'm super stoked, man. Um, I've had a ton of love and success with the iguana species, cyclura species, the um, stenosaurus species. I keep a bunch. So um, I've also been learning a bunch, man. And it's also a pleasure to learn from everybody else online that's shared from zoos to private collectors and stuff like that. I just love wildlife, man. So um, hopefully these animals will be fertile and we can release these animals to an iguana project and uh, hopefully get these guys tagged and re-released back in the wild as babies. Um, so I'm super stoked, man, and uh, stay tuned for this video. Um, we'll have a ton of updates on these guys as babies. We'll show you guys putting them in incubator. Um, today's date is August 18th, um, 2020. So. I've had these guys probably for like a year and give or take a week, two, three weeks um, tops. They've been in my possession. So it's also a super blessing to be able to provide a cage, provide food, you know, provide just love, uh, tender love and care to the species and in, in return to get 13 good looking eggs. So um, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm super stoked. I'm pretty sure uh, you guys know all my iguana stuff I go through and I love, so. See you guys soon. Peace. Quick update on the eggs. Bring them over to the OG. He's a master guru with everything. Incubation, all eggs. He's done this a million times. School us. So what we do here is we have this stuff called vermiculite. It is a type of, it is actually a type of synthetic wood that a lot of plants a lot of um, agri agriculturists use for planting soil, a potting medium. And what we do is we wet it one to one water to weight ratio. And then, as if the animal put him himself, knuckle it, and you knuckle it and you sink the egg about 50% of the way. There you go. How much space am I supposed to put between the two? That's perfect, you're doing perfect. Now, if you've watched any any eggs of animals hatching, um, iguanas are a different sort of hatching thing. They literally 
you guys are gonna see when he takes the videos of them hatching, they come out like in the course of two or three days. All of a sudden you come in and one of the eggs is split and you just see this little face like gasping for air. <gasps> and it takes a good two to four days for them slowly coming out. It's my first successful batch of eggs I've had. Um, a lot of trial and a lot of errors and uh, it's cool to finally get some success and progress it's not done yet because just because the eggs look good they can still go bad um, and why is that right well in the wild you have what's called feeder eggs so if you have an animal that lays multiple eggs some animals lay two three four eggs some animals lay 30 40 50 eggs this animal lays how many is there 16 13, 13 eggs so when they lay them, they lay them in a big bunch. And the ones in the middle will benefit from the rotting um, heat from the other ones. They're called the feeder eggs. They dry out, they rot, they um, produce moisture and produce heat. And the ones on the inside will benefit from that by hatching slowly, by slowly getting that heat and in growing so that's why a lot of times you get an animal that lays 13 14 eggs probably four or five of them maybe more aren't even fertile mm -hmm. when you have an egg follicle the animals it has it's almost like a circle almost looks like a spring and the first couple might not be fertile the second batch might be all the fertile ones and then at the end of the, the egg follicle they also might not be fertile as well now a complete, totally blown out of water. Every one of these things could hatch and be perfect, or none of them. But looking at these eggs, how nice and fluffy and perfect they are, I'd say all of these look absolutely perfect. And you're like, oh, what, 90 days, huh? I, you know, I'd have to look that up. I've never personally bred with Delicatissima. I mean, you're talking... What, what Mike did with Delicatissima is special. I mean, he's being, you know, real humble about it and saying, oh, it's my first batch of eggs, but... This is a big deal. These animals are really hard to obtain, really hard to breed, and, and to produce these animals is a special thing. And, and, and I don't even know. I saw I saw a ton of your, you know, you work with your projects with the pectinata, so I knew it wouldn't be easy. I remember you having, you know, a full year of <coughs> eating, cage building, and you know, you had like what 10, a 1090 ratio, and then the next year it was 70 30, and the next year after that he had. 120 pecanata, you know, so it was cool to see that progress. You yeah, know. you gotta keep learning. So, what's today, August 18th? Yep, 2020. And we're at the time down 6 p.m. So, I also get to write in my first log book today. I'm pretty stoked. Um, put them in. I'll put them up here over here, right here. I have a phone incubator. So. You guys see the incubator is set at 86 degrees. We just opened the door, so it went down to 85, but then it came back up to 86. And now this particular incubator, it has a history set. So we look and see the low history is zero, zero. That's broken. The high history is 87. So we'll check it every few days just to make sure the incubator is holding form. Clear that out. Just use a probe. 86 degrees it's exactly there it's got a little light on so we can see and we'll check it every couple of days and make sure congratulations thank you for you boy love you hey <laughs> it's always great to have one of the can world's best teachers can i do it can i do it boom <laughs> <laughs>